The following lecture by Trigueirinho, the transmutation of the Logos of the Earth, with simultaneous translation into English, was recorded live in Brazil in July 2005. Uma pessoa estava lendo ou estava estudando Someone was reading or studying about the logos of the earth, the logos of this planet. E ela está perguntando como é que nós colaboramos com o logos da Terra. And she is asking how we can collaborate with the logos of the earth, nesses momentos atuais. Especially in times such as these, o que nós chamamos de logos da Terra, what we call logos the logos of the planeta, earth, the logos of this planet, é um núcleo de consciência de pura energia. is a nucleus of consciousness o logo do planeta, of pure energy. Não é um ser. The logos of the planet is not a being, logos, even though the logos um consciousness is the state that humanity então, must also attain. Logos so the state of é consciousness of the Logos is a goal for everyone, elevado, a very high state. Desde o nosso nível monádico, and it exists in our consciousness at our monadic level from the level of our monad up through the higher levels of the cosmos. This state goes up to the cosmic Logos, mental level. Grega, né? Como se sabe. Logos is a Greek word, as we know. É um de é and um it is a nucleus de of consciousness. De it is a state of consciousness of Esse pure energy. Tanto pode ser a base this state of consciousness can be um the basis from which to create um planeta, a universe, to create um a planet, sistema, to então, create é um a system. Básico, so it is a basic state for any creation. O logos, esse núcleo de and the Logos, this nucleus of consciousness, can also carry out tasks in different regions of the universe or of the cosmos. So when we say the Logos of the Earth, we could mean the consciousness base on which Earth was created and recreated. Or we could also mean the Logos of the Earth as this state of consciousness that could fulfill some task here and now as it is actually doing. Every celestial body, be it a planet, a sun, a star, every celestial body, everything that we see in the sky as a celestial body, all this in its deepest essence is a logos. Então, se a visualizar, se a if humanity could only grasp, if humanity could only realize that it is on a path of evolution um logos, that could actually become a logos, não? it is hard um to believe, humano, isn't it, a that a human being, that humanity a would um be able to celeste. become the essence Percebe of a celestial body. Logos. Do you see what this logos is? What this nucleus of consciousness is and what this energy is? So the logos of the earth, as the person we mentioned was asking, the logos of this planet is the consciousness that is the source of life of this planet. So the source of life of this planet is not anything physical. This planet has its physical dimension. But its consciousness, its source of life, is this logoic nucleus, this logoic consciousness. And we repeat, this is not a being, but rather a state of consciousness. And it is this logos, it is this consciousness of the planet that guides the inner evolution of the earth. So the evolution of the earth is not guided, for example, by the sun, which is the regent of this system. The sun has another role. The consciousness of the earth 
is not guided by any other bigger planet. All these evidently do have some influence on the Earth. But what really guides the evolution of the Earth, what actually guides it, is this Logos, this Earth consciousness. And this evolution is guided so that everything on planet Earth, everything that exists on planet Earth, here, alive on planet Earth, is a part of this consciousness, is included in this consciousness. This Logos of the Earth, this nucleus of consciousness, has a representative, or it may have representatives within the Earth itself. And the representative that is best known to humanity is what humanity calls the Lord of the world. So the Lord of the world is not a Lord, as these words say. The Lord of the world is not a being. The Lord of the world is an extension of this planetary Logos. It is very important for us to learn to depersonify these things. Because if we personify the Logos, we reduce it to an almost human expression. Even that which represents the Logos of the Earth, which is called the Lord of the World, and which in the Bible was called Melchizedek, this is not an individual. It is not a being, but it is an extension of this Logos. So see how our terms and our vocabulary are flawed, how they are phony. To call the extension of that which keeps Earth alive, the Lord of the world, this diminishes it to something almost human. And to some minds, or to some consciousnesses, this hinders an expansion. This which is called the Lord of the World, and that is also traditionally called Sanat Kumara, or is called Amunakur, is an extension of this planetary Logos, of this Logos of the Earth. It is not the Logos as the life of the Earth, but it is an extension that becomes what is called the Lord of the World. We can understand this by using these terms. The Council of the Intraterrestrial Center of Mislitlan is also an extension of this Logos of the Earth. So if we begin to draw near to the energy of this Council, if we study these consciousnesses of Mislitlan that represent this Council, that represent the life of the Earth and the destiny of the Earth, then we begin to connect with these realities. But this subject is being raised because right now the Logos of the Earth is being transmuted. So we are living a time of transition on this level of consciousness of the planet. The planet right now is neither as it had always been nor as it will be because its logos, because its consciousness, because this life that permeates it is being transmuted. We as individuals are not the only ones who are transmuted. A logos is also transmuted. Transmutation is a very extensive law. So this life of the Earth is also transmuted. 
Uma nova consciência logóica. And the planet is é presently nós, taking on a new logoic essência, consciousness. It is as though we, as essences, essência, were becoming transmuted in this essence, realidade. there in the então, depths of reality. Funda, so if the deepest, planeta, if the most essential logos, thing of this planet, essência, which is the logos, this essence, funda, if this deepest de thing is undergoing a process of transmutation, if it is in a process of change, then everything that is on this earth, everything on this planet, not only feels a change, but it is as though it did not know what this change would be, because no one really knows how it will happen, not even the earth itself, because the earth is being transmuted. It is as though what is most essential in this planet were being changed, transformed into something else. So this is radiated and the, everything on this planet is in this situation. Everything is taking part in this great transmutation. With this transmutation that is occurring now, with this logos profound change, this logos that is being transmuted, vai ser with this, que it will be possible entidades, entidades for cosmic entities correntes de vida completamente novas and for completely new life currents to draw near to the environments of the earth and e become de vida, a part of the earth. São and they are life currents or entities ao novo logos. that correspond to the new então, logos. Isto traz inclusive uma mudança, so traz this inclusive brings um about a modification, traz inclusive it uma brings a troca, rearrangement, não só de posições, it also brings about a change, mesmo de energias, not only of positions, but even of energies in the planetary hierarchy planeta. itself in the actual hierarchy of the planet. Normal, there is no way we can possibly appraise si this with our normal minds. É isto, if we could grasp what this means, we would be able to understand our situation eternos. at present as inner beings. Terra, hoje, On planet Earth today, there is nothing and no being that knows clearly what the next moment will be, because the energy currents, the Logos, is being transmuted. That which is the very basis is being transformed. Based on such a profound transformation, Substituir a it lei was do possible material, to replace the law of material karma with the law of higher evolution. This does not mean that the law of material karma is not present and that it does not carry on, because humanity is within the law of material karma. Essas novas but this new logos, these new currents, have brought in the law of higher evolution, which is being nós, introduced, and we as humanity are also within this transition. E nós não muito and melhor, we are, are not very well nenhum. prepared, or rather we are e... not at all prepared. To live without the law of retribution, which is the law of cause and effect, which is the então, law of material karma. So in our own transmutation, in our own change, we would have to live, perceive, understand, and really live this law of higher evolution which is a movement which has no going back and has no pauses to rest, such as in the law of material karma. In the law of material karma, we have one incarnation 
of intense work. Then one incarnation of rest. And if we have many very intensive incarnations, then following these, we may have many tranquil, restful incarnations. So we are used to this. We are used to this rhythm, this rhythm of the law of cause and effect of the law of material karma. In the law of higher evolution, there is nothing like that. And in the law of higher evolution, one goes on evolving, rising, growing, expanding continually. There are no stops, there are no interruptions, there are no intervals in this law of higher evolution. And because of all this, because of all this situation, you can imagine how much the inner beings are affected. And this is the main cause for the current situation of conflict that exists on earth, for discord on all levels. And here among humans of the surface of the earth, you can see the level of these conflicts. This de inquietação para quem não pode acompanhar This brings about uneasiness among all those who are not able to follow the transition processo. of this entire e process with tranquility. Campos, and in some fields, such as the international field, it is almost impossible to maintain peace. Likewise, it is also almost impossible to maintain peace, to maintain harmony, to maintain understanding when you extend your sphere of relationships. This is inherent to these times. So it is impossible to broaden a sphere of relationships or to generalize a topic being discussed without any conflict because of all this transition. This has reached such a point of threat to the stability of the Earth, to this planetary condition, that many forces, even intergalactic ones, many beings from other worlds, from other planets, have come to the aid of the Earth Evidently, most of them are not incarnated. The majority work on the inner levels because on the inner levels one can work much better, much more freely than one when one is incarnated, than when one has to deal with certain conflicts that are characteristic of the planet Earth during this transition. And one has to deal with all these things that happen here. This transmutation that is taking place, this change of logos, requires a rearrangement of the energy of the entire planet. So every being from this planet and everything on this planet is becoming restructured. Nothing will remain as it is. 2,000 years ago, it was already said, there shall not remain stone upon stone. 2,000 years ago, we were warned. It is impossible at this time for stone to remain upon stone in any of us. This does not only apply to the world, but also to each and every being in the world. And with all this, since everything has to be changed, our bodies also have to change for us to remain incarnated, as well as the bodies that will come after, because there is a law of reincarnation here, so there will be always bodies and souls inside the bodies. Our present bodies are already undergoing this transformation because our bodies, the way they have been so far or the way they are now, are not suitable to live this situation. They are not appropriate. So up until today, these bodies have been suitable. 
for the situation of material karma. But when we come to the law of higher revolution, these bodies are not suitable. Not a single one is adequate. So here we have a process of material change as well, including for those who are incarnated. Obviously, this does not mean a change in skin color. It is not a change of height or weight. This is a change in the innermost part of matter. So we are going through transitional situations. We are experiencing situations of change which we do not understand and we do not know about and we do not know where the change will take us. And even though we are totally unaware of all this, our matter is feeling it. Our matter is sensing it because this change is taking place in this very matter. In order to alleviate all this, a new genetic code is being introduced, but into our consciousness. And then with this new genetic code developed in our consciousness, this entire issue will come much closer to us. Because the new genetic code is not like this one, which we have had so far. It is not like the DNA, which was taken from animals. But this new genetic code comes from other levels and is not material. If this non-material genetic code were not implanted, our present physical brain or our human comprehension would not be able to understand all this, nor would we be able to participate in this transition in an intelligent way. So the more things are unexpected, the more things are unpremeditated, the more things are not the way you would expect them to be, the more things digress from what you would consider to be official, orderly, correct thing, the more you will be able to follow this transition serenely. In this transition, and it will go on developing until the complete transmutation of this Logos. So as this unfolds, as it goes on developing, we will become trained to deal with what is unexpected, what is the mysterious, to live without seeing, to not understand things fully. And we have to keep our balance within this situation. This is possible because the planet itself, which is also in this situation, is maintaining its equilibrium. And these intergalactic forces, these extraterrestrial clusters from the inner levels are supporting and are sustaining all this. And this entire situation is present here. And at a certain point, as we become more subtle with the implanting of the new genetic code, at a certain point, we will begin to perceive all this clearly. And we will even begin to be able to interact with this. Because now, our levels of consciousness are no longer as separated, no longer as set apart as they used to be or as they still are in some people. Some levels of consciousness are already becoming integrated. The emotional body, for instance, is already merging with the mental body. So today, human beings are able to have much more emotional control because the emotional body is no longer set apart. The emotional body is already beginning to merge with the mental body. And many things that the soul, the higher self, introduces into the mental body 
are reaching the emotional body because an interaction is taking place between the emotional and the mental bodies. So today, the emotional body is quite controllable. All we have to do is evoke our higher inner levels and unity among these levels begins to take place. And today our emotional body is able to be controlled as never before. So it is very important for your mind to receive positive seeds, evolutionary seeds, because these seeds that the mind harbors, seeds that the mind incorporates when the mental and emotional bodies become unified, these seeds will work on the emotional body. And if you look closely, you will see that people's emotional reactions are not what they used to be. Even when a reaction is emotional, you can see the mind at work there. You can see that even while someone is reacting, there is some thinking going on behind that. It is not all disjoined, but there is already a beginning of thought inside that reaction. I don't know if you have noticed this. People who used to lose control would become completely unmanageable. Today, and these very same people lose control, they are quite manageable. Have you noticed this? And these people are more self-controlled than they used to be. This happens because the emotional level is already quite permeated by the mental level. Therefore, with these unifications, the intuitive element becomes unified with the mental element, and the spiritual element becomes unified with the intuitive element. So it is into this new system of bodies that a, a new genetic code is being introduced. And it is a question of time, of inner time, for humanity to become different. And this is possible because the energy of the earth is changing, the energy of the planet is changing, and the very bases of the planet are being transmuted. So humanity is practically being swept along by this transmutation, by this change. With all this going on, any interposing of a very different energy on earth can happen without the earth disintegrating. That which is to bring to the earth the conditions to become a sacred planet, something which the earth has not yet attained, it, all this energy and the transmutation of this logos of the earth all this can come about without the earth disintegrating, without the earth undergoing disruption that could be either telluric or volcanic. Such reactions will not come about because of these energy changes even though Earth may continue to receive an energy or to have an energy implanted in it that would disintegrate it in other circumstances, this transmutation of its essence is going to take place without the Earth disintegrating. These new impulses, this new energy, these forces that will transmute the Logos do not descend directly to the entire planet. These forces are received by certain planetary centers. The Ibera planetary center is one of the nuclei of planet Earth that receives this new influence 
interna, Iberá has the inner structure. Iberá has the wherewithal to receive this influence, to work through this influence, and then to disseminate it to the planet. So on Earth we have a planetary center, or more than one, which, in other words, has a consciousness that is higher than the consciousness of the planet itself. If this fact has reached our knowledge, and if we have been informed of this, it means that, in some way, we are already in touch with these transformations. Iberá is very important in all this that is being said, because Iberá is the nucleus of the planet, Iberá is that center of the consciousness of the planet that is in charge of receiving that which is most striking, that which is most unusual in the situation of the Earth. Iberá transmutes this and distributes it to the other planetary centers. So Iberá works with the other planetary centers sending them what is unprecedented in the form of energy that the Earth is receiving. Iberá receives this, takes this in, then works on it and redistributes it to all the other planetary centers. Sun Human beings belong to Iberá, and other human beings belong to other planetary centers. Those who are part of the Iberá consciousness perceive this clearly. Now, if other beings are linked to or belong to or are participants of centers like Fátima or Erx or others, they receive this energy in a more filtered way. And the process in their consciences is more tranquil, if such a word can be used. So in this overall state of humanity, of continuous transition, and even an arduous compliance with this state, those who follow this situation connected to centers such as Fatima or Aurora have a specific disposition and a certain inner reality. They have a certain kind of work. But those who are connected to Iberá have a work of transmutation that is not only more conscious, but also much more active, since they are taking part in this general transmutation. All this is a real birthing. In other words, a real delivery. And everything on this planet is presently undergoing these labor pains. And the result of this birth, and no offspring will be born because the physical earth has already been born and reborn and there is nothing more to be born here. But the result of this delivery will be that the earth will be able to know how to fulfill that which is the cosmic purpose for this cycle of the manifestation of the planet. So this birthing of the earth, these labor pains we can all feel, this birthing of the earth will bring about an awareness of the purpose of this earth. Because if you ask what the purpose of the earth is, no one on earth today would be able to tell you. People do not even know the purpose of their own lives, let alone the true purpose of earth. 
So we live on an earth without even knowing what its purpose is, the purpose of this planet. Because if we were already aware of the purpose of this planet, and if the earth itself were aware of its own purpose, certain things would not go on happening here anymore. There would be another kind of life here, not this one. So this purpose will become clarified, it will become clarified, then not only will all life change, our relationship with the planet will also change, because if we do not know what we are doing here, if we do not know the purpose of all that is here, how can we have a correct relationship with the planet and with everything on it? We have already moved quite far ahead in this process of this transmutation because we can talk about this quite at ease. We can talk about it and we can understand and conceive this. We can even begin to perceive this in our own being and perceive it even in our own bodies. People will be able to understand their own mental instability. They will be able to better understand their own emotional instability, which is no longer the way it used to be. Emotional instability today cannot even be compared to what emotional instability was in other times in this same humanity. We're talking about humanity as a whole here. And not about individual cases, because each one has his or her own process. Well, there is a way for us to help this, to cooperate with this situation. And each one's inner being will place the person before some task, and the person will learn how to link the task that was given to all this. Of course, no matter how useful our tasks may be, no matter how real our tasks may be, they cannot be compared with the tasks to be carried out in planet Earth, the tasks of the Earth to become transmuted in its essence, to receive another logos which comes from a completely different energy. We have to find our own ways and means to be in this transition and to become familiar with these movements, become used to all this. And if you begin to offer yourselves in silence to carry out this inward, individual, internal work, you will see all your problems dissolve like a sandcastle because all the problems one could possibly have here on earth are really no more than sandcastles because not a single one of them is the real problem. So we become aware within the scope of the raising of our consciousness. Now, consciousness has no limits, so we simply have to begin. We have to offer ourselves to this in a higher sense without these obstacles that are karmic remnants all remnants of this DNA. Today, all these are remains, all these are residue, because what is new is already here. The new is already being perceived.